Am I worried about rolling shutter affecting my photos on my Nikon Z6 II? And should you be worried about rolling shutter on your mirrorless camera? Today, this is what we are going to discuss. Let's jump into it. Now I've owned my Nikon Z6 II and I love it. And I've discussed in the past why I sold my Nikon D500, which was a great wildlife camera and bought the Nikon Z6 II because for wildlife photography, it's not the best camera. The Z9 is terrific, way out of my price range. If I was just taking photos, I would still be using the Nikon D500 because it was just awesome at taking photos. 10 frames per second, sharp images all the time, but I wanted to take more videos. This is why I bought my Nikon Z6 II. But this camera comes with flaws, and that is at times I will get rolling shutter. And you may get rolling shutter on your mirrorless camera as well, but you might not recognize why you're getting it. You might not know why you're getting it, and sometimes you might think like, what am I doing? Is it camera shake? Am I shaking the camera too much? So what is rolling shutter? Rolling shutter affects the horizontals and vertical lines in your image. Now you might think like, well, I'm out in the scrub. There's no real horizontals or verticals. Well, there are. They're all around us. Branches just come out. So they're the horizontals and the tree that's climbing up, they're the verticals. And this is where your camera is susceptible to rolling shutter. Let me play a short clip to show you what rolling shutter is. Can you see it? It's just bouncing all over the place. My camera was on a tripod, so there was no camera shake there. That is rolling shutter, but I found that I don't get it very often. I've seen a lot of videos, I've heard people talk about rolling shutter, how this camera is worse for rolling shutter than this camera. So about four days ago, I went out to see if I could induce rolling shutter in my photos and also which modes stop this rolling shutter effect because not every camera mode will give you rolling shutter. When we're taking photos of moving subjects, we have three modes on the Nikon series that we can use. We have continuous low, continuous high, which gives us around five and a half frames per second, or continuous high extended, which can give us up to 14 frames per second. I've never found that I could shoot any higher than around 11 frames per second. So I'm going to say that the maximum I can shoot in continuous high extended is 11 frames per second. The mode that I use most often when I'm shooting wildlife is continuous high extended because I can get nearly twice the amount of images than continuous high. And at times I really like using the silent mode on my Nikon Z6 II because there is no noise. But this is the problem. Whether I'm shooting in continuous high, silent, or continuous high, extended, silent, this is where the rolling shutter happens. Should I really be worried about it? I found that I just accept it. It's just par for the course. Because when I'm in silent mode, it means that my subject is very close, or I'm in an area that is very quiet, and the bird might spook. So if I've got egrets, or if I've got a very shy bird close to me, within like 10, 15 meters, then I will use the silent mode and I will just say, tough luck. I will get a few photos with rolling shutter. But realistically, if I showed you a couple of photos, could you pick out the photo that has rolling shutter? Because it's very hard if you're just seeing one photo. And most of the time when we're sharing on social media, we're just sharing one photo you'd have to be very good at depicting, oh, okay, this is a bit slant. Sure, if the bird is moving very quickly, you might see the wings sort of roll around a bit. Now I'm going to show you three birds, four photos each. And before I show you the frames that have rolling shutter by having a red outline around it, I want you to try to see which number it is. Is it number one, two, three, or four? Now let's take a look at these photos. Which one had rolling shutter? Just think for a minute, leave it in the comments. Was it number one, number two, number three, or number four? Now let me show you which ones had rolling shutter and you will see a red frame around the photo that had rolling shutter.
Did you notice that the egret didn't have any rolling shutter? That was taken at continuous high extended in silent mode. That should have given me rolling shutter, but it didn't. I found that it's very erratic. I cannot say, okay, well, every fifth frame or every seventh frame is going to give me rolling shutter. Sometimes it happens more often than not. And I really think it all comes down to the amount of vegetation around my subject because the more verticals and horizontals, this is where I found a big problem. So here's some examples of the different modes between continuous high extended in normal mode, that means silent mode is off, continuous high extended with silent photography turned on, continuous high in silent and continuous high without silent mode. And you will see by the red box around how often it happens. So this is a wide ibis, continuous high extended silent, which should give me rolling shutter, 95 photos taken at eight and a half frames a second. Now there is no sound because we're in silent mode. Look at it, it's just jumping all over. Can you see which one? has got rolling shutter, very hard to see. And this is how quick it happens. You really won't see it when you're taking a photo. On this day, I didn't use a tripod. I just used my monopod because I didn't want to do this test with a tripod because most photographers, when we go out photographing wildlife, we're either using a monopod or we're just hand holding. Now here's another set of a white ibis at continuous high extended in silent mode, 75 photos at eight and a half frames per second. And you will see that there is no rolling shutter in these images. See, I'm just moving around the place. That's just me trying to keep the bird in the center. But there is no rolling shutter. Now this set of the same ibis was taken in continuous high extended in normal mode. So I could hear the shutter sound and I had 11 frames per second. I took 75 photos. So you saw, all I had was just the shutter sound and I got some great images. My advice to you, if you're concerned about rolling shutter, if you've noticed rolling shutter in some of your images, then just go out somewhere where you can take multiple images. They don't have to have birds in them or anything. Just take different sample images. Take some where there's just like one tree, shrubbery around it, and take some with just a pole in different modes because you have to do this. There is a difference between eight and a half frames and 11 frames that in silent mode, I lose around three and a half frames per second, but I'm willing to lose that and suffer from a bit of rolling shutter when the bird is quite close to me. If the bird is far from me or if I'm in an area where there's quite a bit of noise that the shutter sound will not spook the bird, then I'm just going to shoot in continuous high extended without the silent mode turned on. Now this set of images of some black cormorants at the top of a tree with a lot of branches around highlights where you can really suffer from rolling shutter. There's 85 photos, eight and a half frames per second. 22 of these photos had rolling shutter. Now this is at half speed. Again, I've just added the shutter sound. Can you see how the branches are just moving slightly? This is rolling shutter. And it can be a problem only if you let it be a problem. Remember also that you're moving around when you're hand holding or when you're on a monopod. So this will be very difficult. And unless you really look at the fine details, you're not going to see it. Sometimes we worry about things that we shouldn't really be worried about. We should be more worried about framing, about the composition, about making sure that what we're photographing, that we're getting focus. That's what I worry about. Now the photos I just showed you were in continuous high extended. Now these photos of these black cormorants were taken just at continuous high, both in normal and the others in silent mode. So you'll see that even though I'm using a slower frame rate, I still get rolling shutter in silent mode. So these first 25 photos were taken at continuous high, no rolling shutter, five and a half frames per second. You see five and a half frames per second is much slower than 11 frames per second. Now these next 22 photos were taken at continuous high. We've lost one and a half frame per second using the silent mode. And I've got three photos with rolling shutter in these 22 photos. Look, you can just see one, two, three, that's it. 
but at times even using continuous high extended in silent mode I don't get rolling shutter and this is why it is very difficult to predict when you're going to get rolling shutter and I really want to do this test for myself as well because I wanted to see when I would get the most instances of rolling shutter and now that I've done this test I can be fairly certain when I'm going to get rolling shutter and that is that when there's a lot of shrubbery around and the bird is in a very dense area if the bird is in an open area like that ibis at the top of the tree or like this little egret that you're going to see now I'm very rarely going to get rolling shutter so this little egret here continuous high extended silent 24 photos no rolling shutter now I'm just moving but there is no rolling shutter this is just continuous high extended at 11 frames per second I don't expect any rolling shutter here now here's a set of this male superb fairy wren in very dense undergrowth 40 photos at continuous high extended five of these photos had rolling shutter this is at full speed now this is at half speed there so you can see when I'm taking each photo Now this is why I use continuous high extended either in silent mode or in normal mode because I have the ability of capturing more frames per second. On this one here I had it in silent mode because the ferry ring was so close to me and it was just so quiet around. I tried without silent the little ferry rings just took off from me. Not too far but because there was a lot of undergrowth I just couldn't get a photo of them. I just waited they came back and I put the camera in silent mode and I got these photos and still at eight and a half frames per second I got some great shots as you can see I only get rolling shutter when I'm in the silent mode and this is with my Nikon Z6 II it might be different for your camera if you're shooting a Sony or if you're shooting a Canon for me rolling shutter isn't something that I worry about and it isn't something that you should be worried about as well but it is something that you should be mindful about when it could happen for me it is when I use silent mode so will I keep using the silent mode for sure when I need to use silent mode so thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video give it a big thumbs up if you've got any comments or feedback leave it in the comment box below enjoy your photography and I'll see you next time